Hi everyone, I'm Les. And I'm Ashley. And you're listening to Anthropotamus, where we explore some of your favorite anthropology topics. Hi everyone, welcome to our latest episode of Anthropotamus. Today we're discussing the book Sins of the Shovel, Looting, Murder, and the Evolution of American Archaeology by Rachel Morgan, who is an um, archaeologist, I think of uh, Southeastern Archaeology. Um, yeah, I mean, this book just came out a few months ago. I really, I mean, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. I, this is, you know, one of the few books where I, f- I felt like it was very well written. It wasn't, you know, how I hate overly descriptive stuff. It wasn't like that at all. It was descriptive, but straight to the point, uh, filled with a lot of information. Uh, and I really liked the way that she wrote it kind of like in the style of a novel. So I felt like it was easier to follow along instead of just having like a dry history book. I agree. Yeah, no. So this, uh, the book immediately grabs my attention. Uh, it was a little bit, um, I was like, okay, so where are we going? I was a little confused about what the startup was. And I was like, okay, so what, what's happening here? Why are we in Utah? And then they started talking about um, the the two you know main characters that are followed, which are the brothers out in Utah and so on. And then it starts getting into looting the uh, the sites and selling. It. And I was like, okay, so this is a familiar story. I, I know this story, right? I've heard it before. And I think anybody who has um, have any classes in archaeology or has any real you know done any real studying in archaeology is going to be familiar with this kind of story if you're I, let me rephrase if you're from um, the United States as an archaeologist or have United States archaeological background then you'll you'll know what we're you know what she's talking about initially so um, and I do think that's a factor is knowing what she's talking about it it helped grab me and pull me into it uh, the only issue I had was there was so many names she kept mentioning and I'm so bad with names that it, it became difficult to follow along listening with Audible. Um, so this is something I think I would have preferred to have a hard copy and read it so I could actually see the names and help me remember who she's talking about. Um, uh, that was really the only issue I had with the book was like, damn, I wish I had the hard copy so I could remember people's names and who she's talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, maybe the maybe the audible should come with like a, a note card so you can file <laughs> the people. I know, right? Uh, um, but I mean, I think felt like she she did it so well telling this history that I I had to stop and be like, wait a minute, is this a novel or is this actual history she's writing about? Yeah, it was it was really well conveyed. Uh, I think I was surprised at the amount of. Um, not I'm trying to think of the word um, emotion not it's not quite right the the level of stakes that she was able to apply to the story even though this is a historical thing that's already happened uh, it was it was really interesting to to see the evolution of this person's life go from you know a startup in this town they're doing really well they build this empire and then near the end everything's falling apart right it was it was an interesting uh, tale to go through Uh, one thing i thought was funny is oh god what is that guy's name that was working with richard and richard is always complaining about this guy in letters uh (laughs) what is that other that guy he's always complaining about but i was like you, there's no. It, I got That's the, the thing about paper copy. You need the paper copy to keep track of all these. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I wish I remember the guy he was always complaining about. What is the name of that guy? I don't remember. I don't either. I almost felt like it was a female name, but it wasn't a female. Anyways, I thought it was so funny because like there's these documentations of him like complaining about this his coworker. Or this other researcher, and is like, "Oh, my wife could do his job. Look, I don't yep. need him." Yeah, but it's and then like, he, didn't he? Uh, was it when they split apart? He, the other guy, got some of those letters. He said, "No, <laughs> no, I read your letters. I know what you think of me." <laughs> <laughs> but didn't he go back eventually to work with? I don't remember. I don't remember him reading the letters because I had it like I had to speed through uh-huh. the book to get 
it was a lot. It was a lot in this one book. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was funny because the author never discusses any documents about how the other guy felt about Richard. Uh -huh. It's always just Richard complaining. And I'm just like, this dude is just like trying to mind his own business and do his job. And Richard's over here like just talking crap about him all the time. You know what would be gold is if he if there were some documentation about how he felt and it was just like, yeah, Richard was kind of moody today, so I made sure to, you know, get him some coffee or some tea and just, <laughs> just like doing whatever he can to just make this guy feel better and not and then just like this guy is ripping on him the entire time. <laughs> I th I just get the impression that he was just like, dude, I'm just here to do my job. You were not worth my energy and just kind of like kind of just get minding his own business i feel that way sometimes <laughs> um but yeah i would that would i i would love to to read the other guy's viewpoint on richard but um i mean i mean i think the big thing about the book is talking about the racism and uh that's rooted in anthropology and in archaeology and the this complete disrespect archaeology has had on cultural resources throughout the decades um, and things are changing. Things are definitely changing. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, 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 it was a huge issue and it's still an issue. Um, <laughs> I was going to, I was just going to comment on that. Yeah, no. So it, it has been a, a, a terrible issue in this. Um, and I, I, I had learned a lot of what had gone on in this book already, but, uh, I'll, I'll say this: there, there is an element of um, of shame, I think, in um, in the way people teach archaeology. They they tend to want to gloss over that sometimes, depending on who's teaching it. Some some of the professors that I've had have been very very straightforward and very honest about the the history of archaeology, but uh, others have very much you know wanted to just kind of skip past it and not talk about that part that's in the past now type type mentality but the truth is yeah no this this had a major impact it was there were some terrible things that that uh that archaeologists did and as somebody who's going into an archaeological field uh it, i think it's important for us to to recognize that look back at it and understand you know what's happened you know so we can try to do better going forward i thought it was uh interesting because you know it talks about how Richard and his team uh, worked at improving how they preserved things and dug things up and documented everything because, you know, we know archaeology is very destructive and how, uh, you know, they came back to the site at one point and somebody else had been there and just kind of like totally destroyed it and had like bones scattered everywhere and artifacts just everywhere. Um, but then we get to the end and it's discussing... Uh, you know, it brings up the youngest brother on some tour and how the youngest brother is listening to the story about how his family were basically looters. And yes, what Richard and his family did was n not okay. The way they just collected things and sold them. Um, but in comparison to the way archaeology was being handled by other others at that time period... I think was progressive not to, well, I don't want to, I don't want to give him a gold star, but in comparison to, to other archeologists and the looting that was going on, they weren't such the bad guys. They're bad guys, but no, not, they're bad guys. They're bad guys, <laughs> but not in comparison to the other things going on at that time with archeology. So they were just bad guys with better manners. That That's all it was. They, yes, they, uh, when they started using procedures to actually collect things and they were a little more careful, things got better, but they were still selling oh, yeah. cultural artifacts. They, they, were, they were mining cultural heritage for, for gold, for subsistence. But I think we've got to remember that this is a time period when basically, you know, white settlers and colonizers were, you know, told we can do whatever we want with this stuff, it, you know. The oh yeah, it, who this belong to? They're dead. They don't matter no more. So we can do whatever we want with it. So I mean, I think that's an important thing to remember. And yeah, I, I'm sure the way they documented things uh, influenced 
you know, how we, we document and excavate things now. Oh, absolutely. But, but yeah, let's not encourage the selling of indigenous yeah, cultural no, resources. And, and you're right. They, they were doing better than a lot of people at the time. Uh, so there, there is that. And they, they helped lay a foundation for some of the ways that we do things now that are, you know, much more respectful and procedural and so on. But at the same time, it, it is, I mean, this book is called Sins of the Shovel. Uh, it, it's, yeah. you know, the truth of the matter is just what's done is done. It doesn't make it okay. What we can do is, you know, move forward from it. But I kind of felt bad for the brother at the end because he was probably like this little old man who's probably stuck in his, you know, ways, who didn't understand, who like never changed with the times and was like, why were my brothers so bad? Um, but yeah. But I mean, I think that's the thing about anthropology is trying to understand other people's cultures and perspectives and they may be in the wrong, but it's still important to understand their views are coming from yeah and that there is another thing um it you can't really judge somebody if you're not from that same cultural you know uh, framework and, and that doesn't just exist cultural framework exists across time and space and groups and people it's not just the culture of you know san diego versus the culture of sacramento you you've got San Diego 1920s versus the you know 1930s 40s etc and we can look back at this this group of people and say well you know there is it's it was more acceptable for them but at the same time it was also fairly evident that it wasn't really all that acceptable considering how often people called them looters and how much of the legislation was actually developed to keep them from looting things so that you know there's that like they they had to know that what they were doing was wrong if for no so. other reason well i mean think about it because if for no other reason that people are trying to say hey this is not okay we need to protect these resources and it was it was a larger it was a, a relatively large group of people I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think if you grow up believing certain things, it's hard to get out of that mindset, like this idea that, oh, I'm superior and because of A, B, and C that I have the right to this. I think people have a hard time, um, getting out of their own heads and looking at other people's perspectives and understand, really understanding, you know, two sides of the coin. Uh, I, I don't know. I, th I think that I think to them. I, I, well, being probably slightly racist and also, I just, I just there, think they, there's they, a little more than slightly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> I was being nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they were a little bad. People, I mean, really people have a hard time just accepting information that doesn't agree with the already pre-existing perspectives or beliefs. I mean, yeah, that's definitely true but i also think that that's a bit of a cop-out right so it's and and what i mean by that is a lot of times people will say well the prevailing evidence right now is telling me okay so this is not right but this is how i was raised so this is how i'm going to do it but refusing to change people, with the time that's not how people think though well yeah so maybe i hope i never do, solidify people, into that i hope not either i mean should people have an open mind and listen to others Yes, but I mean, even look at our own current political situation. How many people are just so stuck in believing one side, even when facts are presented to them? I mean, you're right. You're absolutely right. It just... You know, I remember hearing um, an old uh, saying in a... I think it was an old cowboy movie or something like that. I don't remember. But um, it went like this. Um, if one person calls you a horse you call him a jerk. If another person calls you a horse, you punch him in the face. If a third person calls you a horse, you better go shopping for a bridle. 
and not, I'm not telling anybody to go punch somebody in the face. So don't. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, the the same was, it, it's it's at a certain point you have to take notice of what people are saying. You if, should. If, an, if enough people, people are saying that, the though? same thing, even if you don't want to accept it, you should take notice of it and make your own evaluation of it. Make an honest evaluation of it. But I you're mean, right. People people yeah, don't do I what agree. they should. I agree that people <laughs> should be more open-minded and uh, be more accepting of information. Uh, but people are ginormous a-holes and they like to believe whatever they believe and don't want to let go of that. I mean, there's a reason why in general, people tend to make friends with other people who already have similar belief systems or see the world a certain way. Yeah. It's called an echo chamber. Yeah. Anyways, this turned into a very serious topic about discussing. Our yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I like this. This is good. This, uh, it was a good, so, and, and you know, there was that comment that I was talking about, um, that, that uh, somebody said, this is an interesting but poorly written uh, book, etc. It's just too many disjointed, underdeveloped ideas and too much unexplained terminology. Uh, and I think that boils down to um, this: the person didn't have enough foundational knowledge to understand the, the story as a whole. Um but for those of us who who have that background knowledge, I think it's important to spark these conversations. I think it's very important also to, I mean, when we can accept the fact that we've chosen a career field that is rooted in racism and um, just looting and the disrespect, just complete disrespect of, you know, people's heritage. Um, I mean, it's important to acknowledge that so we can change that and start building better relations with um you know the indigenous community make changes you don't clean by sweeping things under the rug right yeah you you have to you have to address the problem you sweep it out you scoop it up and then once you've addressed it and gotten rid of it then it's clean right you mm -hmm. you put it under the rug it's just a problem for another time um second the rug moves or or needs to get moved it just unveils all that that crud that would have been uh that we could have taken care of already and now it's making a worse mess than it was before and I, you know i i lean heavily on metaphors here but you know the the past happened it's we we can try and deny it if we want to but that really just leads to more conflict mm -hmm. yeah um i mean what else what else can i can i say um Um, I, you know how we always speed up the book? Um, yeah, I definitely did. <laughs> I actually couldn't go past 1.2. The narrator spoke so quickly. Wow, really? That I couldn't go past 1.2. Um, which, I mean, I think is a good thing. Uh, yeah, thank you yeah. for that narrator. Because I feel like we have so many books where the narrator speaks so slowly that I have to, I speed it up to 1.5 and it still sounds normal to me. Um, uh -huh. So good job to that narrator for not being a slow reader. Not being a slow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know who who was a narrator. Uh, I don't uh, even let know. me pull it up. I just had it. I just had it. Eighty <laughs> second. Um, the narrator was Rachel Perry. Okay. Yeah. Good job, Rachel Perry, for not being a slow reader. Oh, I hate slow readers on Audible. It drives me nuts. Um, I don't mind them. I like I, I like a, a, a slow even timbre. It depends on the story, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, for for something that like this, I generally do speed things up. Uh, not not that a you know I want to make this whole discussion about the narrator. <laughs> but, I think it's a I think it's a good idea to recognize the narrators here and there. <laughs> I, um, we 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 if we we want to give them good positive feedback as well. Yeah. encourage more fast readers <laughs> yeah we've had some bad narrators that we've had to listen to um yeah i mean i, I mean i'm not really sure what else to say about this book um I, you know um something i really did not have any knowledge 
on was was it uh the world fair was it um i didn't know anything about that when they started talking about that the world fair I uh was... i that was on what chapter 10 i don't know i was like in the middle of the book um yeah and it was i i i i was trying to speed through the book so we can record um I, I remembered that, but... something about it. I I, I I remember reading about that before, but it was like only as references in a textbook. I well, my thing. I was a little confused when I was listening because it was I had to speed it up a little bit, and I I don't know. It I didn't want to have to keep going back in the book. Um, and I just remember them discussing inviting in indigenous people. Um, oh, yeah, and I that was, was... Con were they putting them on display? Yeah, yeah, they were. That was pretty bad. Okay. And I... then a lot of them died, too. Yes, I was so confused. I thought it was so absurd that they would put people on display like that. I thought I was not listening correctly. N yeah, no, so that, that was one of the sins of the shovel there, for sure. Um... And I couldn't believe... That there are indigenous people who agree to travel to the fair to allow themselves to be put on display. And I didn't well, they say I, only some people were compensated. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they were given much of a choice uh, in whether or not they, they went. Uh, it was, and, and what was it, the, I forget the guy's name, I swear, we need to start writing things down when we read these. Well, I listen um, to the book while I drive, so otherwise I would write down <laughs> things. Yeah, yeah, I, I listened to it, well, I listened to it while I was doing about a thousand different things, um, but uh, yeah, so the, the guy had a history of not paying his debts, and in fact, that was one of the, the major points of um, of drama, if you can put it that way uh, in in a in a book about history it was a bit of a a dramatic point when his whole empire kind of started collapsing because he didn't pay his uh, his debts and people were finally coming to collect um but yeah uh, and then uh didn't he get shot by he got shot by somebody didn't he i don't remember we're talking about richard right yeah. I was confused because it starts talking about how his wife became a widow. And then I was like, what the hell did I just miss? I must have been distracted. And then I kept, I was trying to go back to figure out where, where I'd missed it. And I couldn't find, figure that out. Yeah, I think, it, I think he ended up um, getting shot by somebody he was having an argument with on the road. But, uh, well... I guess if I have something to say about this book, uh, it it was very interesting, and it's it's uh, it'll give you some perspective. And I should say also that, um, and I know we've mentioned it, but we are you know as a discipline, archaeology and anthropology has changed and is still changing. Uh, so, don't take this as the you know the gospel of how things are done now. We you know things are things are developing and for the better, but. Um, if you do want to read this, I would recommend researching anthropology a bit beforehand because a lot of the terminology, like the, the comment said, a lot of it is pretty um, niche. It, it is it is related to anthropology as a discipline. So if you haven't, if you don't have that background, it might be a little more of a, a tough read for you. I, I, and I didn't even notice the terminology until, you know, you read that review and I was like, oh, I, I guess you're right. I'm just so used to listening. There's, there's a lot of terminology in it. It's not, it's not high level stuff. It just would be if you, you know, if you don't actually look things up when you read or if you don't like to stop and, and, you know, check, Hey, what is this? That's going to be a tough read, a tougher read for you. You won't probably enjoy it as much as if you have that background knowledge. Um, but again, you could absolutely just go through it and then stop and, and just look up the meaning of a word here or there, um, to fill out your knowledge base. I, I do think that, um, that, that review as that part as a problem. Yeah. And all that, 
that that was easily solved um, just by doing a little bit of uh, you know self study. It just it would make for a, a slightly better experience if you have the background. Mm -hmm. I was thinking too when I was listening to the book, I was like, this would be a great mini series. Uh, because, oh yeah, because there's like all this like racism and well, looting they... and then there's like love stories in it like people yeah. getting married and i was like dang this would be a hell of a good miniseries didn't they, just... they start a miniseries based it didn't they talk about one that they started and then they had they, they it got shut down because it was uh capitalizing on the uh all of the stuff that i forget what happened I anyway that Maybe um, I might be thinking of another book. I, I, I was reading like three books at the same time for the, while I was reading this. Yeah, I don't remember. I think it'd be a great miniseries, though. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, anyways. I mean, I don't really have much else to say. I recommend the book. Um, yeah. I recommend getting... I mean, if, you, if you're like me, who have a hard time remembering who's who, I would get the, you know, the paper copy. But, oh, I'm looking at it right now. It, it's only in a hard copy. Oh, but it's only $25. Yeah, it wasn't too expensive. Yeah. Oh, I think it's a good mantelpiece too. Like, can you imagine somebody walks in and says "Sins of the Shovel"? What is that? It's a very, yeah. pro a, a very evocative title. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. <coughs> Excuse me. Edit that out. <laughs> I think it was after, so it will be okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, you ready? I'm gonna to put that in the front. Of okay. the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shift it to the front. That'll be what we open with. All right, you ready to wrap this up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Anyways, great book. Really recommended. We're talking about again, Sins of the Shovel: Looting, Murder, and the Evolution of American Archaeology by Rachel Morgan. And until next time, guys. See ya. Thank you all for listening. Distribution of Anthropotamus is in collaboration with the American Anthropological Association. Please continue to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Anthropotamus for our latest episodes, show notes, and book discussion schedule.